Hello, I'm Lynn Wolf, Managing Editor of Rural Lifestyle Dealer Magazine with my From the Field column for a Winter 2015 issue, Customer Service That Loses Business. When the service department is in the middle of a war, the little bal battles for the best result of the customer may differ from reality. That strong sentiment is from David Wood, owner of Smitty's Lawn and Garden in Olathe, Kansas. He wrote in response to an editorial in our online eBrief newsletter. That editorial detailed the frustration shared by a rural lifestyle friend trying to get his mower repaired. He worked with four dealers, waited weeks, and was extremely unhappy with the lack of customer service. These two viewpoints set the ugly scenario happening every day at dealerships, with manufacturers being the player behind the scenes. Wood and other dealers say that customers have unrealistic expectations. Many not only are unfamiliar with what goes into repairing a machine, but come into the dealership with lesser quality equipment they bought at a big box store. Could it be possible that the throwaway cheap equipment that is not worth repairing is giving the industry a bad name, Wood proposes. Half of the dealers in our 2015 Business Trends and Outlook report say they are concerned about warranty claims. The OEMs don't really care about what happens in our service department, just buy stuff, Wood says. There is little or no margin left in most parts. Manufacturers, uh, manufacturer reps weighed into the editorial with their own perspective, saying that dealers who don't meet every customer's service request are missing opportunities. Floyd Jett, regional sales manager at Hitachi Power Tools says, most dealers forget the best opportunity is when a customer has a problem. Dave Elias, territory manager at Modern Power Products says, what an awesome opportunity for the dealership. The customer has an older unit, but maybe do, that may be due for replacement, if not now, in the near future. Dealers struggle to balance business reality with a customer who expects the repair to be a priority, no matter if it's the first time in the dealership or if their equipment should really be scrapped. Dealers may be caught in the middle, but you also have the power to fix the problem. Customers need your knowledge and expertise to fix their equipment or advise them on new. And most manufacturers, even those with a big box distribution, can't stay in business without a dealer network. Floyd Jerkins of Jerkins Creative Consulting offers this advice. Never blame the manufacturer for anything in front of the customer. When a salesperson throws a manufacturer to the wolves, they look bad too. If there are issues with the parts or a warranty, you need to deal with it. You are the front line, not the manufacturer. The customer may want to fire the manufacturer, but don't make them want to fire you too. Rick Bales of Bill's Tractor of Adkins, Texas, and a member of our editorial advisory board offers this perspective. Just because you may not want to work on it or be able to, doesn't mean you can't see yourself as a good business. So take control of the battle. Start by pushing concerns with your manufacturer rep and raise the issue with your dealer council or bring it up yourself at national dealer meetings. If the lack of support from your manufacturer is hurting your dealership's reputation, be bold and change lines. Keep educating customers in the hopes of win winning new business, but be practical enough to recognize and lose those customers who aren't interested in a relationship. There is a lot of business to be had. Just look at the numbers from our 2015 trend survey. Nearly 84% of the dealers in the survey expect revenues to be as good as or better than last year. However, a word of caution, the market may not always be this good. So the customers you secure in the good times will be the customers you have in the bad times. Thanks for reading.